Hi, Gensa. Hi. <laughs> We're so excited to have you on Erotically Neurotic. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, guys, we just have to tell you, Gensa and I are really good friends. <laughs> Yeah, you two have fallen in love via we, Instagram. We fell yeah. in love via Instagram. Like, yeah. I don't even know how it happened. I don't know. I think it was just, like, being super unhinged and, like, the DMs. <laughs> but I also yeah. just felt comfortable. I just remember sending you voice notes because I feel like if I vibe with somebody, I just start voice messaging them because I'm like, okay, you seem, like, really cool and I'm tired of typing. Yeah. I just, like, I hate texting. I hate typing. Which is so funny because I'm literally an author. But <laughs> <laughs> I actually distinctly remember yeah. you leaving me a voice note for the first time on Instagram because I was giving my son a bath and Amanda was over. Yes, That's right. And I do remember I was, this. I was listening and I was like, oh my God. And I'm like, Ginsa just started like audio messaging me. Like, whoa. Yeah. And I was like, this is kind of fun. Okay. I remember. And then mm-hmm. Ginsa and I just, then we were talking about really getting more and more inappropriate because that's who we are. And so we were like, let's take this to like our cell phones off of Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and it just went from there. I It's weird because I don't normally do that. But it's just when you're in your 30s and you just don't have as many friends as you used to, like you just become a lot more aware of the people around you. Like yeah. it is kind of weird if you really think about it. Like you just meet someone on the internet. You've never met them in person. But for some reason it's like – you can still feel the vibe. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. And then no, yeah. it's so true. And then it just felt like I, I'm not just going like I'll DM anybody and like we'll have organic conversations, but like to take it to like my personal phone number and like having personal mm-hmm. conversations. That's like I'm not doing that with just anybody. So I felt like this is a very special relationship that the three of us really do have together. <laughs> Yeah. But it is so true. Right. In your 30s, it is so hard to meet people that don't take energy. And you exactly and that, by that, I mean, it can be the nicest, sweetest, you know, funniest person. Right. But you still are a little bit on with them versus like when you meet someone where you can just be yeah. 100% your authentic, disgusting, grimy self. Absolutely. It is so special. It is special. And that's why I loved listening to y'all's podcast so much because I was like, Oh my God, if my, so one of my best friends, she lives in Hawaii, her name is Grace, and she and I, we're in a book club together, but we actually listened to your podcast before I even, like, reached out in the first place, oh my gosh. and she was like, we could totally do this one day if, like, the author thing doesn't work yeah. out, <laughs> and I just remember I was on the train in New York when I was traveling, listening to y'all's Credence podcast. It was the first episode that I listened to. And I was like cracking up in the subway. And like, you know, like you don't like bring attention to yourself. So I'm just over there like cackling like in secret on the train. I'm like, don't bring attention because like I don't want to get mugged. But I just remember (laughs) hearing y'all's dynamic and just being like, I love this for them that they were able, they're so open with each other. And it just reminded me of like my closest friends, like how we have those Mm -hmm. unhinged conversations and there's no judgment, (laughs) there's no shame, especially when it comes to this topic of like romance, like it's such a new, new part of my life. And so a lot of my friends are discovering these things about me and they're discovering these things about themselves, which is really cool too. So Mm -hmm. I love that you guys have this relationship together and like decided to do this because I'm shouting it from the mountaintops. I'm telling everybody, like, oh, y'all so have oh, to listen you. to them because y'all are so fun. I love when y'all just laugh for, like, a minute straight. <laughs> There's nothing being said. It's just cackling. And I just feel like yeah. that's, like, when you laugh so hard, it's the best feeling ever. And, like, oh, my God. Who, we, I just feel like we don't do it enough. Like, people don't laugh enough. People yeah. take life yeah. too seriously. And I agree. You know, it's like that hearty yeah. soul laugh that only your best friend can get out of you. I'm just a huge fan. I, like, just love y'all so much. Well, we're a huge fan of you as a person and an author. Yes. And we want to talk about your amazing debut novel, Meet Me in the Vines. Let's do it. I have it right here. How how have you felt since... Oh, my God. Look how beautiful it is. so beautiful. How have you felt since publishing this book? Yeah, touch him. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. (laughs) Yeah, get in that ear. Get in that ear. Um, How have I felt? Okay, like... Well, I think that any first-time author can relate to the excitement leading up to release day and then the elation that you feel on that day and the amount of attention that you're getting. And it's mostly, if 
if not anything, like all positive attention. But then the day after, it's like having a baby. It's like baby blues. It's like going through Mm -hmm. postpartum depression, honestly. Mm. Um, And it's 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 been really hard, actually. Like, at least for me and other indie authors, first time debut authors that I've talked to that you go through this weird um, just this weird post-release depression kind of where now it's sinking in that your work is out in the world, something that you spent so much time on for the first time releasing it, something that you have just been with your words, with your little circle of people, whether that's your, your editor, your alpha and beta readers, your family, whoever you decide to share the book with before it goes out to the public. But once it's out there, for everybody, it's really scary because then that realization hits of like, anyone can just shit on my book and they will, Mm -hmm. and they will absolutely do it. So I've felt uh, it's just the highs are really high and the lows are really low. And I feel like if you stay too much in the middle, you numb yourself a little bit and that's also not a good place. So it's almost like having to learn how to be really comfortable in the high and, and celebrate that. But then how do you navigate the low and like, who do you go to for support whenever it comes time? You come across a one star review or a DNF or a comment that's just someone talking shit about your book. And it's just like you always say, oh, I'm not going to take it personal. Like I'm not. No, it's always personal. Like no matter what authors say, those words that they spent so much time on and put out there, they're always going to stand behind their book. So when someone disagrees, it's only natural for us to be defensive for a second. But I'm learning how to thicken my skin through this process. And so overall, though, I'm grateful and I'm like so proud of myself. And it's like the most proud I've ever been of myself outside of giving birth to my child. I would say this is like the one thing for me that I've done that I followed through on. So it feels amazing. I I think we're what today's Sunday. So Tuesday will be, or no, on 4th of July will be one month of my book being released. Wow. So a month later, like I do, I feel great. I think that like it was a little tough in the beginning because you, you want to read everyone's reviews, but then you're like, wait, I can't do that because that, that sucks really bad too. It's almost like you don't want to read the positive ones either, which sucks too, because you just almost don't want to know anything about it at all Mm -hmm. and for Mm -hmm. some reason authors torture themselves and one late night you get on goodreads and you just want to only read your negative reviews and see what people didn't like about it and then you just like why did i do that to myself so i stopped yeah i stopped read i don't check goodreads i don't check amazon um i thankfully have not been tagged in anything negative but I know a Good. lot of authors that do. I don't know why people do that in the first place. That's so nasty. It's so people nasty. People forget. I think with social media, right. this isn't a new thought. This isn't like groundbreaking. But right. people really forget that there's a human being on the other side. Mm-hmm. So when you're just kind of typing it out, when you're putting in funny gifs, whatever, mm-hmm. I think it dehumanizes the other person. So yeah. people feel really emboldened to say really nasty shit. Yeah. And then they're, you know, you're so brave behind your keyboard. Like you can right. say like, would you actually say this to my face? Like, yeah, like that you, yeah. you thought my characters were bland or you didn't think I did it the story justice. Like, would you actually say that if I asked you like, how'd you feel about my book? Or would you just be yeah. right, like a normal person and be fake? And just say, oh, it was great. And then go talk shit about it behind yeah. my back like a normal fucking person would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. I wish people did that. Totally. But instead, they're, totally. they want they want to. I just feel like people just want to get their opinions out in the world. And they like the attention. They like the attention. I read something. This was. I didn't I didn't say anything because like I'm not I'm not trying. We're not trying to start Instagram fights or anything. No, for sure. But I thought this was beyond odd. I saw someone. This is not related to your book at all. Mm-hmm. In general, on like a, a comment, they posted that they don't read trigger warnings before books, but if they end up getting triggered in a book, then they decrease their stars. And I was like, hmm. Yeah. What? The, the, oh, that's a dick move. That what? is a dick move. The point. That's such a fucking dick move. Yeah. And the point of putting yeah. those trigger, which honestly, that's a new thing. If you look at books from a decade ago or even even five, six, seven years ago, 
Yeah. Content warnings were not a thing. You went in blind with those books and then you just dealt with it, you know? But yeah, now exactly. it's like it's like best practice as an author to put in trigger warnings just because that's just how our society is today. And that's fine. I think that you shouldn't be reading books anyway that have anything that's going to trigger. I, I, and how do you, like, the, it, to me it was like, it screams like Demi Lovato at, <laughs> at, the, at, the soft at the soft serve place where she's triggered because they put what was sugar free or not. And they're like, bitch, this is for people with diabetes. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Just because you're triggered doesn't yeah. mean it's an actual issue. Right. It's a you it's a issue. issue. Yes. Yeah. It's a you yeah. thing. It's a you thing. And <laughs> it's like, I was like, you're reading Demi Lovato and I can't <laughs> talk to you. I've, I've had to remind myself too that like, even though I take it personal, it's, it really is a them thing. You know, it's like, yes. it's 100%. not. Yeah. And so there's a difference between a critique with somebody who actually like read my book and is saying some things that maybe are negative, but like, it makes sense. Like, it's valid. Like, I can see where you saw that. And then there's just plain disrespect. If, like, my books blow up and I get more attention, I, I can just see I would only have to protect myself more. So just imagine, like, bigger authors, like, how their DMs probably look way crazier than yeah. mine ever have at this point in my career. So I think about yeah. that, too. Like, I take it with a grain of salt. Like, I don't have it as bad as other people, but... But you know what? You're doing the work right now to set yourself up yeah. to continue to be successful yeah. as you become more and more popular as an author. Mm -hmm. And that's all you could do. Right. Yeah. So. And we fucking love your book. Thank oh you. Oh my God. I, I'm, I'm thinking of you receiving any negative feedback about your book because it was so fucking good. I can't get over that this is your first book. Thank you. I, I feel like the, the metric for me saying that it's good. I don't read books on airplanes. It gives me like migraines and headaches. Yeah. I read your book for like five hours straight when I was flying to oh my God. France. And I, was, I talk about this in the episode. There was a guy sitting next to me. I can't get over this. I'm sure other people have moved on. It's a nine hour flight. Ginsburg. Yeah. The entire time he either read the Book of Mormon or he watched Christian television, <laughs> whatever's like uploaded to the oh thing, which is like, you, know, you do you. Nine hours the man didn't sleep. He either read the Book of Mormon or watched the show. Oh my God. I am sitting there reading your book every couple of minutes, turning the AC on because I'm getting like really hot because it's like so sexy. Yeah. And then turning it off because then it's like a normal scene. Yeah. And then turning it back on. Like, I'm having like full body jolts while this man is reading his Bible. That is so funny. And I just thought that was like funny that you were. Meanwhile, if he got a glimpse of the book you were reading, he'd be like, here, take my Book of Mormon. <laughs> It's like, I think, Cleanse, I'm like, this is my book. Cleanse yourself. Like, can I pray for you? Learn how to please a woman. Yeah. Yes, can I pray for you? Oh my God. So we need to know, yeah. how did you come up with this story? Mm -hmm. Did these characters like write themselves for you? Or yeah. just what What was that process of like, this is Meet Me in the Vines, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Um, so it, it sounds kind of like, it's a little like dreamlike, but it really was from a dream. I started having these dreams <laughs> for like two weeks straight of like the same thing. So ever, so backstory, ever since I was little, I've been a very vivid dreamer, which I've always loved. I, when I, I remember most of the dreams that I have, I have a dream journal where I write down really like intricate dreams that I've had that I really enjoyed that play out like movies in my head. And I still remember dreams that I've had since I was like four or five years old. I don't know. Oh my God. Yeah. I so, am so jealous. Imagine me when I was pregnant with my daughter. How, because you know how they say, like, you dream some weird shit when you're pregnant? It yep. was like times 10. It was so crazy vivid. And so I've always just loved that about myself whenever, I guess, my subconscious is just like very, like, creative and, you know, vivid. And so I started having this dream of like the vineyard and like, high school romance type thing. And like, they were kind of faceless characters, but I just kept seeing like a vineyard. Like it was just mm -hmm. like vineyard, like wine country. And then just this whole, um, Kellen situation, like the antagonist coming and like chasing a girl. Like it was just like, I kept dreaming that. And so I started writing it down and this was around the time when I felt really lost as a person towards the end of 2023, I nursed my daughter for a really long time. Um, and I felt like I didn't have an identity outside of being a mom. 
And I feel like a lot of mom authors can maybe relate to this, especially ones who've released their first books. It's really hard to find your thing. When you become a first time mom, you don't know how to separate yourself from your child and like find your old self because your old self is dead. You're like grieving the person you used to be. So I was like grieving my self before I had my daughter. And so um, once I finished nursing her, I felt like I had zero purpose. I didn't really have, I quit teaching. So I was a teacher for a very long time in the Montessori world and I wasn't doing that. And then I tried the corporate life for five, six months in sales and I hated it. My mental health crash because that is just not fun. Sales is like yeah. a whole other grind, but I respect people oh who God, can I'm do sure. it. But anyway, I left that. And then I just felt like I was disappointing. I wasn't really, but in myself, I felt like I was disappointing everybody in my life, like my husband and my parents and just, I just felt like if I can't do any, like what is my purpose now? Like. I don't want to be just a mom. And so that's where I decided when I kept having these dreams, like I've always wanted to write a book. I've loved reading. I love romance. I've been reading romance since I was a teenager and I just love storytelling. And so I said, mm -hmm. fuck it. I'm going to like write a book and just go for it. I didn't know what I was doing, of course, but then I got some really amazing people behind my dream. Um, and I got really lucky with the people in my circle who helped guide me through this whole journey. And Audrey and Donovan just came to light and their names just came very naturally. And I already knew the story I wanted to tell. And so it just like, I think I wrote the book in less than two months, like less than two and a half months. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit, I did not know that. Yeah, I wrote, I started writing on January 4th and I finished like on Feb, like on March 4th, like March 3rd. Like it took like Jeez. two months. Yeah. So it took. It's almost like an exorcism. Like your body needed it. It was. Your body wanted it. It needed it and it wanted it. And it was the first time outside of having my daughter that I was like, I think I found something for me for the first time. And so, mm -hmm. um, and as a mom, too, you feel selfish in some ways where it's like you don't want to give any other attention outside of your family, but you have to for your own sake. So yeah. um, my husband was really amazing in supporting me during that time. And like he did bath time and he fed her and he took her to school every morning. And I would be I wouldn't the whole month of January. I didn't see the sun. I was just stuck behind my computer writing my little heart away and that's how the yeah. whole story came to be and it just wrote itself so originally it was supposed to be a rom-com and it was way lighter than it became and it was mm -hmm. like it, mm -hmm. I, the original story was audrey was are we supposed to say spoilers like is this spoiler yeah. okay oh, yeah okay our, we can talk about everything podcast is spoilers. okay yes. great so originally audrey's grandmother still passes away um, which I guess that's not a spoiler. It's literally in the blurb, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so Grand dies. She comes home and she has to take over the family business. And it was supposed to be like a workplace romance. Like Donovan works for her family and they're supposed to, he's supposed to train her. But it was more like a enemies to lovers because the whole thing was th like he they had a one night stand and he stood her up. And that mm. still was going to be the premise. But she, they, he was going to show her the ropes on how to run a vineyard. And it was supposed to be like funny and like meet cute and like they fall in love and all of this stuff. And then it did not turn out that way at all. No. It became so much darker and like so much more emotional. But it was a story that I, I needed to tell it that way. And the characters really took mm -hmm. the reins. And I think when authors say that, it's like how, you try to imagine like how do you just let these fictional people like write – like, aren't you in charge of your story? It's really crazy to say that these people become real in our heads and they, yeah. they become so solidified in our brains that like they really do take control. You can't stop thinking. It's like their thoughts become your thoughts and then everything that's like coming out of your hands and like onto the page is all them. And it's like weird. It's like yeah. a weird out of body experience. Um, and it's really cool because you just like let these fictional characters take over your brain and that's how the whole thing happened. Well, yeah. 
I'm glad you addressed that because I was really taken by, um, I'm a trauma therapist. I'm very passionate about trauma and I'm very, I get very specific about how trauma is depicted. I can get a little like nitpicky. And the way you depict such complex trauma and like a variety of different types of developmental trauma, single incident traumas, Mm -hmm. all of this, I thought was depicted so beautifully and accurately. You did such a good job of showing it, not telling it. Thank you. Like, I find that often, yeah, you're very welcome. A A lot of characters would be like, because I have trauma from childhood, I don't connect with people well. And I'm like... Okay, don't say yeah. it. Show it. Yeah. She and says thought, this. I can't. Amanda says this all the time in episodes. Yeah. She's like, the author was exactly. It's just too on the it's nose. It's just too on the nose. Like, yes. show us. You don't have to write right. out every single thought. Yeah. Because it's more realistic to yeah. experience it right. yep. than to have the insight of it, right? Yeah. So I'm curious what made you decide to take on the challenge of of including all of this trauma yeah and the healing process so i think that you know domestic violence is obviously a huge theme in the book if anything it's like the main theme in the book um because i was a survivor i'm a survivor myself and it happened well over almost two decades ago it's like 15 years ago but it's still something that sticks with you and Mm -hmm. i went through a lot of therapy and a lot of self-work on myself through my 20s to be the woman that I am today and I just felt like this book also I I didn't know at first it was going to have domestic violent themes until Audrey's character I started plotting her out and I just was like no like she's me and I feel like therapeutically I need to write her character so that I can fully be free of my story. Not that I wasn't, but like, it was just like one final thing for me to be brave enough to put it out in the world because it's also why I chose to publish under my real name, you know? And so Ginza is not an easy name to pronounce. I always have to correct people or have like a, you know, a little warning before, not warning, but just like a little, Hey, just FYI, my name is Ginsa. You probably were thinking Ginsa or something else. And people are still saying my name wrong, but it's okay. So it was like those little logistics that you think of an author. It's like, I wanted to use a pen name so people wouldn't get my name confused. And also like, I don't know if people, this could be a marketing thing too, but would people pick up a name that is just hard to pronounce or, um, you know, not to get so political about it, but also like, obviously I'm a person of color, like in a genre that is predominantly white. And so mm-hmm. is my name gonna be drowned out from the easier names to pronounce bigger names that of my of my peers? Um, and so all of that I put, but then I said, fuck it. And I was like, a lot of that also was, I do still have an abuser out there and I didn't want them to know. But then I said, no, I do want them to know. Like, I want them to know that, like, I wrote this book thinking of what you did to me. And like, yeah, and I loved all the messages I got about how much people hated Kellen because it's like, Mm -hmm. it was just like that channel for me to like, get that out, get my story out. I was 19 years old going through that experience. Like, we're babies at that age. Like, you, like... Audrey, she was so, um, like, what's the word? Um, uh, impressionable. Like, yeah. we all are when we're 18, 19, 20, like, when our brain's still developing, and you think mm-hmm. that everything is the best thing in the world, and then everything's the end of the world at the same time. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I took my trauma from that, and I just wanted to write a very realistic character of like, if you've ever gone through a relationship where you were so in love, like remember how it felt to be like that in high school. You Mm -hmm. know, like when people try to tell me like, oh, it was like insta love. I'm like, well, yeah. Do you not remember being obsessed with your crush or your boyfriend or like pining after someone and then you Mm -hmm. get to like lose your virginity to them. And then once you have sex, it's like, oh my God, like I'm in love with you. We're getting married. Tell me that's right. not a so, shared experience. Like it, it trust right. me, it is. We've done we we've discussed some of the most embarrassing moments of our lives I'm sa- as right as teenagers in love. One hundred percent. Yeah. And what's amazing about Audrey and what you're describing as well is like, yes, she's eighteen, going off, 
super impressionable. But not only that, at that time, she had also already experienced horrible right. capital T trauma. Yes. Yeah. Plus, she's impressionable. And that equation, of course, is going to lead you to someone like Kellen. Yes. How could it not? Exactly. So that's also yeah. something that I love that you brought that up because I try to think, why did I keep going after these toxic men after that? Mm-hmm. It's because that's all I knew. I only knew tumultuous. I only knew violence. I only knew reactive. And mm-hmm. so, of course, that's what you're attracted to because you don't know any better. And it's funny because I did not grow up with a traumatic childhood. I had the best childhood. I had the best parents. And I think it's just when you grow up and you just you just meet somebody who wrecks your world. It's not yeah. our parents' fault. It's not like once we're 18 and like flying out of the nest, we just... I just imagine my mom and dad just praying every day that like I would just be okay. And I think that was also the dynamic I wrote with Audrey having her mom passing away and yearning for that type of relationship, but her father being abusive as well and going through his own grief and trauma. Um, I didn't grow up with grandparents. And so it was a little bit of a dream for me to like have grandparents around. So that's why I wrote that too, because my husband had that's my first experience with grandparents is his grandparents were still around. And so his grandma died last summer. And so I kind of used that inspiration of like seeing, seeing the grandkids go through grief. Like I, I would never, I remember getting a phone call that my grandpa passed away, but they were all in Indonesia, which is where my family's from. And I was just like, okay, like I didn't know him. So I was just like, yeah, yeah I'm sure. sorry. Like I felt bad. It's like, I should have felt worse about it, but I didn't. Cause like, I don't have a relationship. And so yeah. I wanted Audrey to have this relationship with her grandma and grandpa that I wish I always, I wish I had. And I love that my daughter has that with my parents and her, my in-laws. And so mm-hmm. um, I'm just, I, I wrote a lot of this for my own life. And I think that's really important to start out with. It just gives me the bravery to like push the envelope for my other books too. I think like Mm -hmm. it's very normal for first time authors to write off their experience the first time because you don't know what you're doing. So why not write what you know? Yeah. Don't bite off more than you can chew, even though it's, it's already a big feat to like publish a book and like do the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and so I I felt like at least for the, my first book, I really needed it to be my story because it really is. Yeah. And it's a story of so many other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we love hearing what inspires a book because as a reader, like we truly have no idea. We don't know these authors. Yeah. And so not only do we love hearing that, but your story is amazing. The fact that you had the bravery and the strength to write your story, which is a difficult mm-hmm. one, and the deeper level of insights that we wouldn't have thought about how you were considering a pen name because your name is hard to pronounce and right. okay, it's indicative of a person of color. Does that mean more people wouldn't pick it up even because of that? I mean, mm-hmm. those layers run deep and right. your bravery runs deeper because you did mm-hmm. it and you fucking crushed it. Thank you. That means so much to yeah. me. Yeah. That's really sweet of you guys. Yeah. It, there's so many factors going into it, but at the end of the day, I think it's just like if you're writing a story that you're passionate about and you'll find your people. And Mm -hmm. that's just like what I have to keep reminding myself. Like you're not for everyone, which you'll hear all the time. And it's true. And so I just, I get it. We're grappling with that. We understand. Um, It's really hard for us to get that (laughs) on an emotional, (laughs) spiritual, intellectual level. Um, Clearly there's something wrong with those people. But yeah, yeah, I get it conceptually. I get it. Yeah. So we feel like this is one of, well, I mean, Ginza knows, mm-hmm. as we all know, that I'm a dark romance lover. Yeah. Ginza's, Ginza, you're a dark romance oh, lover. Oh, yeah, 1,000%. But you chose to write a cinnamon roll, mm-hmm. we get the nice guy win love story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so why, yeah, why did we want the nice guy to win this time? Um, so, again, it runs deep, right? It's kind of a deeper meaning behind this, which I think is another conversation to have. I just feel like masculinity is not um, a thing anymore for men. I feel like, especially in society, men who are 
too masculine are considered like, you know, bigot, bigoted or racist or whatever, like slur you want to give them, you know? Um, and I just want to bring back the fact that like, you can still have the nice guy be an alpha male that you want in your life. He doesn't have to be this dark romance person where it's like, oh, you, you mm. touch her and die. Or like, I feel like women are writing these characters so to the extreme because I think on a deeper level, like we want masculinity to come back. We want our men mm. to be men, you know? Um, and I think that there's a softness to men too that also is looked is frowned upon there's a difference between a cinnamon roll alpha male and a beta male a man who is going to submit to women because he's not confident in himself this is a, writing a story about a protector a person who will do go to the ends of the earth for you but he also respects you as a person, it's not even as a woman, just respects you as a human being and mm -hmm. loves his family. I just wanted to write somebody who like had these qualities that women are afraid to like have in their life again. It's like, it's just so, I, I just feel like it's not talked about enough anymore and it's just, we've gone the opposite direction. Um, feminism can get very scary on a whole other spectrum and so, I think that it's important as a strong woman to have a strong man behind you. And people can disagree with me. Some women are like, I don't need no man or whatever. But it's like you're reading books about guys choking you and like you think it's hot. Like I'm all for it. But like, what's that really mean deep down? And so for me, yeah. I married a cinnamon roll person. Like I married the nice guy when all I knew was toxic men who were really insecure. And like, yeah. they did not know how to be, how to control their masculinity. So it comes off as toxic masculinity because they actually are toxic. Um, and it's fun to read this in fiction in a certain way because it's fiction. Like we can fantasize about yeah. these things and separate the two. But when women can't separate fiction from reality, that's where things get really messy. And that's where mm -hmm. like as a reader, I'm aware that like I can separate the two. And so writing the cinnamon roll hero, writing the nice guy who can still be protective and like he can still throw down in the bedroom and he can still like choke out somebody if he needs to. Like I married that person. So like Donovan is very much like coded to my husband in the way of like who I envisioned someone to protect me. And mm -hmm. I just, I, I, I think that's why cinnamon roll heroes are so fun to read. Yeah, it sounds like it's like the traditional alpha, but embracing vulnerability, which I feel like is yes. a big push we have uh, for like what we want, what we hope men are starting to learn that like, yes. you can be confident, you can yeah. be strong, however you want to define that, whether that's physically, mentally, intellectually, whatever. Um, and you can be vulnerable. Right. That dynamic is what makes men, I, I think, like, so sexy. It's it's yes. the ability to balance both versus suppressing vulnerability yeah. and then just being insecure yeah. and hyper-masculine. That's when it's Right. Toxic. And it's still really hard for men to be vulnerable because it's not, it's yeah. not, like, normal for them in society to talk to each other and to talk about their mm -hmm. feelings. And um, my husband and I have talked about this, you know, it's like, I think that if you have, if you are a man and you have a group of men who will lift you up and tell you that they love you, like keep those men in your life because like, that's just not a thing. And that's why I wanted yeah. to make Donovan a very affectionate person with his family and with that. his brothers, because like, yeah. I feel like men showing affection is considered beta. That's not true at all. I think they're like, mm -hmm. oh, they're such pussies for like telling them that they love their fucking mom. It's like, no, like yeah. it's okay for them to still be the person that they are, but show that mm. they love their friends and like his affection with Logan and his best friend. I just wanted I just wanted his whole family to just be very affectionate with each other and know that they had that bond, which I wish more men had have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we thought Donovan was perfect. <laughs> um, besides the fact that he plays guitar. <laughs> 
I wanted to ask, is that based in real life? Has your husband played guitar at you? No. And honestly, (laughs) he's never. But you know what my husband did tell me? So he's going to laugh because I've never said this. But okay. He, He was in band growing up. And he played the trumpet. And he was really good at trumpet. He was like first chair and everything. And he told me that he tried to learn, um, what's the song that I will die every day waiting for? Oh, yeah. What what is it from Twilight? A Thousand thousand Years. years. Okay. Christina Perry. Christina Perry. A Thousand Years. And I don't know where I picked this up. I feel like I need need something to like (laughs) conduct. Is that a blade? (laughs) Yeah, it's a switch blade. It's a highlighter. I don't know. Um, I thought it was like an exact note. Yeah, she's going to like start like shaving her fucking dermaplane right now. <laughs> like just hold on guys, I got to multitask. Um, he told me that before we got married, he was trying to learn it and he wanted to perform it at our wedding. Oh, no. Like with the trumpet? With the trumpet. <laughs> like <laughs> burp, 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 burp. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, that's Oh, babe, that's really sweet. But I'm really glad that never happened because I would have shit myself in my wedding dress. Because I think... You'd be like, that's the biggest ick that literally, could ever happen to it's me. Ar- like, have you guys seen... Like, no hate to these people. But, like, I cannot help but cringe when I do see it because it is so uncomfortable. Like, when, like, the bride and groom sing to each other. Oh, it's the worst. Or like, and they make eye contact. Or when the bride, the like, hand embarrassment. When she's like singing and like walking down the aisle to him, like, oh, no. I know. Okay, oh, so that's amazing. The guitar, I, I, I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> we have to give you shit. Okay, okay. It. When we he's like, when he's packing it. up the truck, and he's like, oh, and then I grab the guitar. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Okay. Honestly, writing it, I thought it was so fucking cute. And then when Kayla told me that it was like an ick, then I got the ick. And I was like, is it too late? Is it too late to take that shit out of the book? Because, okay, so. I like, my favorite part, though, is that Amanda commented. I was like, but Audrey really liked it. She goes, Kayla. <laughs> He's been playing for less than a year. Oh my god! So she's playing like hot cross buns. Like, burr, burr, burr. I'm dead. I. I, <laughs> I did. I did grow up. I grew up in a family of musicians, so music's a big part of my life. My dad is a musician. My my family's my family are all singers and. Um, so I do love music, and I wanted to somehow incorporate that. But it is it is so funny because when Kayla brought that up, I literally was like, I want to take it out of the book now because like <laughs> it is, if you think about it, he's like, let me get my guitar, and it's like, let me just serenade her. But like when oh I was God. writing it, I I wanted I wanted a dynamic where he was thinking about her, and like. Yeah. He heard this song and he learned it for her. But if you think about it. It's so sweet. It's it's so so sweet. sweet. But if you think about it, like, truly in real, I think this is where it's better in the books than it would be in real life. Yes. Yes. Um, If you imagine. I mean, it got him that penetration. It did. Like, she got, she was so turned on after it. And she she told him, she told him that, like, that she loved him and he was like great let's go fuck now like he was like so ready he's like i need this guitar trick to work so that i can get in her pants finally um but i just love that y'all brought that up because i've been thinking about it and it's such such a fucking ick and like he's sitting there like he's singing heaven by jason aldean In the first note, <laughs> if you, it has to be the Jason Aldean version, you guys. It can't be, it can't be Brian Adams. <laughs> I even wrote that in the book. I was like, the Jason Aldean version, by the way. <laughs> you don't even understand. I have the greatest I'm hot. idea for, a, oh my for, God, for a social media post because of this conversation I'm writing down right now, and I cannot wait for you to see it. Um, this is amazing. Oh, my God. But... 
we love we love Donovan. I know. I love and him. We, so we, well. Here's the thing. We can forgive him for the guitar playing because <laughs> he knows how to give that dick. Yeah. And <laughs> talk that talk. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Yes. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. He really, yeah. he is, he, wow, what a combo of sweet, loving, protective, and then dominating yeah. and mm-hmm. sexy like he yeah. was such a perfect combo yeah he is definitely sexy yeah. and yeah. i i loved yes. i feel like it got hotter as the book progressed which is what i wanted yes. because at first it was like you know you have to be careful writing spice with trauma mm-hmm. um because that can be a little off-putting sometimes where audrey just got out of this huge i mean abusive relationship and needed time he didn't want to push her so he really just waited for her to give him the green light which I always knew I wanted to write like I wanted her to be the one initiating and so when people ask me oh what's your favorite spice scene in the book and it's actually when she's doing the whole lotion show like that's my favorite spice scene oh I love his bedroom I love yeah where she's just like out of the shower and she's just lathering herself and she knows what she's doing which I think is so fun Mm -hmm. and that was something I loved about Audrey's character too was like he brought out this playfulness in her that like she forgot about Mm -hmm. and so I think like the cinnamon roll hero also with with the second chance trope I wanted like Donovan to be this person who like unlocked the most beautiful parts of her and like reminded her without changing who she was. It was just like, cause you have to be careful too. It's like, how do I not make this like a control, another controlling situation where he's not, you know, he's basically doing what Kellen's doing, but in a different way. So I, I had to be mindful of that as well. And so, um, well, we, we talked about that. In a little bit of a different way, but in our episode yeah. that we loved, we were like, you know, did you feel like they, uh, their timeline of getting together once they kind of reunited? And we were saying what we loved about it was that they waited. Like, she was with yeah. him, and obviously they were loving and touchy, but, like, also more platonic and not sexually right. intimate right. For, for weeks until she mm-hmm. initiated yeah. it. Even if that part kind of goes quickly in the book. Right. In terms of like writing style, because yeah. you have to move the book along, right. we we thought it was important to, to point that out in the episode that like it might yeah. it might be quick writing wise, but in their timeline in life, yeah. Yeah. it was like so appropriate. Thank mm-hmm. you for saying that because I gotten some hate about that, like oh she rushed into it too quickly, blah blah blah. You have to also understand when writing a book, like you can't as an author you can't dwell on certain scenes like can you imagine if I dragged it out written for two weeks and I I I have to thank my editor for that because like she and I felt really confident in the way the timeline worked out because it is it's 10 years of being apart that's a long ass time yeah like I didn't want to stretch it even more like you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. exactly um, I'm glad you guys who is it it who who is the authority on how people deal with trauma like who determines Oh, no, no, no. She needs to wait. Let's see. Exactly. Okay, she needs to wait. Like, no. People deal with trauma yeah. in different ways. And I th- that's what I loved about your depiction, that she she copes with hers in a way that makes sense for her. And he yeah. is, like, the perfect pairing of that because he matches what she's asking for, but he doesn't fragilize her. Exactly. It's not like, is this okay? Can I touch your nipple? Yeah. Can I touch your clit? Yeah. Can I touch your butt? Yeah. Like, I love how you're... You're, you're, yes. <laughs> going down. Anywhere. Going <laughs> down. <laughs> I love how you turned the hand. Yeah. For the butt. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to, you got to get in the butt. Um, oh, my God. In case you were wondering. I was. Um, I love butts. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I love that. I love your depiction of that. And then it wasn't like this big deal of like, oh, tonight's the night. Let's see if he penetrates. Like, it just was natural. Yeah. He played guitar at her for some reason. She got super wet. And then they <laughs> fucked. That's awesome. <laughs> That's all we needed. That's all we needed. That's all we needed. And, like, I think also um, having the second, the, the redemption date was really the launching pad mm-hmm. for them to, like, replaying. That was a really fun scene for me to write, too, was just how would Donovan act if he actually went and picked her up the next day like he said he would. So yes. it was just really I was fun. So nervous. I know, but it was so fun to like have yeah. him approach the house. It was really important for her to be at Grant at Pop's house and not like mm-hmm. his house, you know. Um yeah. 
and to see her on the porch and like have that whole experience where he would like this is what I would do and like I think that really really was the launching pad the guitar was the icing on the cake but she was already just like I'm definitely getting my pussy wet tonight yeah. for him she didn't wear pa- oh, yeah. she, <laughs> she was, didn't wear panties she, iced up already. she literally was like panties <laughs> gone like I'm not wearing and they were any. sitting on sand no they were not were they on the beach no they were on the beach they were on a, a they were on um a, a blanket like you remember he packed a blanket okay. too yeah, Gensa tr- knows better than sand really in the bed. Okay, How absolutely so not. Crusty. No, they were okay, like good. they were like on grass. It was like in a vat. Okay, yeah, they were on good. grass, so it was it was sanitary, and they were on a they were on a blanket that he packed his checklist of things. <laughs> um, Donovan. I know. And so I, mean, I feel like we love we love both characters so much, but we actually we had a few people write in questions, and one okay. of them was out of all the characters you wrote. Who was your favorite to write? Mm. My favorite was Donovan. Okay. The easiest was Audrey. Because those are two different questions. Okay. Easiest yeah. easiest being Audrey because it was so much of your story yeah. that it was easy to pour out. Yeah. Okay. And most fun was Donovan because he was just like, this is my like dream dude. Yeah. I think also it was fun because I got to write a lot of like my husband and him. Which, yeah. I mean, a lot yeah. of people will ask, like, oh, did you think of your husband? Which is, a lot, some authors get triggered by that. But, I mean, of course we're pulling from our own personal love lives. Like, yeah. you know? And so, um, I, I I had fun with Donovan because writing a man is a challenge. Because you don't want them to, you don't want them to come across as, a, oh, this is definitely a man written by a woman. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, my God. 100%. When they're just... Everything, everything is their mind is like my dick is so hard yeah i'm like Ugh. or the other way Men? or the other way where yeah. it's like yeah. oh i love you so much and like oh my god let me just like you know like braid let me braid your you? hair and like shit like that and it's like <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's cute too and there's this i think there's there's a balance there has to be a balance and yes. so um i would often have my husband read donovan's dialogue and like is this what you would say is this what like mm-hmm. how would you say this I asked other guy friends of mine not just my husband so I would send excerpts to male friends of mine be like how would you say this or does this sound like something you would have a conversation with your bro about um yeah and then the spice scenes I think that's just like preference I think like however dialogue comes out between people in bed is definitely like preference like I wanted them to be very vocal I wanted Audrey to be really vocal. I just read a lot of, I read a lot of romance where they're not very vocal and it's very descriptive, which I love too. But I love when I hear the, when I can see the dialogue of what their exchange, that's just a personal thing. Some people don't like people who talk a lot when they're having sex, which is fine. But I I I personally love reading it. I love reading it. I think it just makes you like, it makes the experience so much greater. It feels much more human and real. Right. Yeah. And I'm sorry that we're about to get into an argument, but oh, I love it. It's happening. I can't, I can't think of what. <laughs> Let's do it. I love. Oh. <gasps> oh my God! Wait. Oh. Okay. Ginza. Yeah. I think I love the expression "blow my load." <laughs> yeah, I'm team "blow my load." Okay. We, Ginza and I are team "blow my load." Ginza, when I hear <laughs> "blow my load." <laughs> and it was a favored phrase. I think of such an excessive amount of semen that's going to come out of this man. Like, like gushing. Okay. Uh, fluid ounces. Like, just like a fire hydrant of semen. Like, so it just made me, like, concerned about being on the receiving end of that. that I think blow my that. load is such a... Excuse me. <laughs> I think, it, I think it's such a funny phrase, too, because it's something that guys... I just feel like say as like a funny like it's a it's a humorous thing to say like yes. for them it's it's yeah. like you don't really take it too seriously you know it's like I feel like high school guys say it it's like kind of I was gonna oh I literally oh my god Gins I was about to be like it's what a 15 a 15 year old would say yes. and it's like a little immature yeah. and I wanted to give Donovan a little bit of immaturity in the sense of like he gets giddy thinking about fucking Audrey he's just like dude like yeah. she's about to like lick my nipple I'm gonna blow my load like or like she just walks by me and I'm like I'm gonna blow my load just looking at her I just think it's like it's a little touch of humor that it, it uh-huh. it's just a phrase that I've always found really funny when guys say it uh-huh. because I don't feel like they're taking it really that seriously but it's 
I was just about to say, if you're thinking about just the loads of semen coming out, then <laughs> why the fuck did you read Glory Milking Farm? Because that is disgusting. The reel that you oh guys posted of the amount, I actually, th- I, I almost threw up. Like, I gagged. <laughs> Can you imagine actually being filled up by oh that my much? God. I mean, it would. No. It would talk about gushing. It would come out of that your ears. Is gushing. It would literally come out of every duct of your body. <laughs> it it would the the number of swallows that would no require. stop it stop 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 horrific uh, it to me. horrific. Oh, but blow your load. Is blow okay. your load is a normal <laughs> fucking. We should expression. do. We should do a poll and see how yes, yes. people are team yes. because this is another thing with down. the word blow my load poll. with the word panties which i've talked in a couple oh. instagram lives that some people hate the word pant some authors do not like the word panties but then there's a lot okay. of people who are like all about team panties i'm team panties i love panties yeah, i'm team panties i'm like Me what too. are you saying like outside of that like undies panties are just like sexy <laughs> i like to say underpants <laughs> just to like you know, make it a little spicier. Underpants. But I think pants. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I pulled so down her underpants. <laughs> her bloomers. Her bloomers. <laughs> Panties used to be like moist for me, like kind of gross, but I, f- I feel like I just grew out of that. It becomes a bit in your life at some point. True. And some people stick to the bit or they grow past that. That's the bit. true. Moist is still, we're not past that. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever be. It doesn't bother me, but it is not sexy. In, r- in writing, though, like, I I put my dick through her moist folds. No, it's not going to work. That doesn't work. Moist isn't it wet work. enough, too. It's just like damp. Okay, what no, do you guys think? No. This is like off topic, but what do you think about slit? Do we like slit? It's not. Um, what's the context? Like, my, it, like well, wet slit. Like this slit? wet slit. Oh, slit for the vag. Yeah. It's not my favorite. I don't. I but think it's I'm not neutral? my least favorite. What, what's yeah. your least favorite? Folds for me. Folds. Folds. Is I don't know if I used folds. I I don't I, think I did. Really don't think you did. You didn't. No. I would know, and you didn't. I used like heat. Heat. You used heat. Good. I used heat. What I like heat. Like heat? referring to as like her heat. Oh, I, oh, used I was that. like, what are you even saying? Yeah, her I like wet it. heat. No, it's fold. It's <laughs> folds. It's folds that I don't like. I also don't yeah. really like um nub. Yeah, nub. Her, her sensitive nub. Nub, yeah. I don't love it. Mm-hmm. Some, right? I, Is that the one I don't I read a book recently where she straight up just said pussy lips. <laughs> and I was like, go off. Like, that is brave. <laughs> like, I should just do that. that is she literally wrote, what you he do. spread my pussy lips. And I was like, oh, I kind of like I that. Like I that. like that. Actually, that just worked. Get to the it worked. Point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was oh like, God, that's, that's hot. Yeah. Oh, the one God. I struggle with the most might be puckered entrance. Oh! For the bung, for the bung hole. Yeah, Mike. It's always, but yeah. it's always puckered. puckered. I know. Just it, say bung hole. Yeah, say bung bung hole. Yes. My bung hole. I'm <laughs> She's not gonna. I'm. I. We're. We're gonna need a lot of editing on your romance book that you're gonna write. Because when <laughs> you're gonna write bung hole, and I'm gonna be like X nay no. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. But I'm never here to ick someone's yum. So. <laughs> yeah what do they say don't, don't, yuck, don't my yuck my yum yeah i know that's yeah. true i yeah. like that so it's fine I if you like if you like fold if you like puckered hole that's no, we're just fine. saying it's not our favorite but you do yeah you, you do you for, yeah, sure. for sure the general yeah. you yeah i agree i agree so what are you what are you working on now yeah um i just announced book two meet me in the valley um oh so we are following tia and logan who are audrey and donovan's best friends for book two i was two. hoping they yeah okay. and so they have great chemistry yes yeah, so their story they are um i haven't released all the tropes yet but if you read the book it's in the back of a couple so he's reformed playboy the college best friends to lovers they both go to school together um in austin so that's like an homage mm-hmm. to my life living in austin um so they leave Oakwood Valley for college and they, so the thing is Tia, she moved away. So she's she doesn't currently live in Oakwood Valley. She moved to Texas and then she decided to stay. And then whenever Logan graduated from high school, he ended up going to UT with her. So this follows, there's a little bit of timeline jumps as well. So you'll see a portion of them in college, which is really fun to write. This book is very different from Meet Me in the Vines. It still has elements of suspense and it has still like deep rooted topics and issues to talk about and like family dynamics. And um, I think just like what normal 
late 20, like early career people go through just figuring out your futures. But then just like, how do I transition from being with my best friend to like something more than that? So that's always really fun. Yeah. So T and Logan is more of my relationship with Travis because we were really platonic best friends in college that obviously became more. So I'm excited to write that dynamic. But this book is way spicier. Um, because Tia and Logan are very different than Audrey and Donovan. Audrey and Donovan, mm-hmm. they were the picture perfect of romance, like sweep you off your feet, like, you know, like the picture, like this is, that's, I you know. know. Yeah. Oh, it's such a good cover. Um, yeah, shout out to my cover designer, Anya. She freaking crushed it on the first draft, literally. That's amazing. Oh my God. I, yeah, I asked her to make like two tiny tweaks and they weren't, had nothing to do with the design. But I don't know if you guys noticed the gazebo in the background too. Oh, oh yeah, my look God, at that. You're right. Yeah, the little Easter egg. I get mine on, kin- on I have mine on Kindle, my Kindle yes. so it's black and white. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there's a little I love. I gazebo. love the text font. Oh, th- yeah, this. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah, she chose that. And I just felt like it was so, like, the series. Um, it, yeah, I agree. So Audrey and Donovan were very much that picture perfect of romance and what you need from Second Chance, that longing. But T and Logan, they're way more loose and fun and, like, very, very different characters. So it's been really fun mm-hmm. to go into that. So Meet Me in the Valley is um, hopefully releases by the end of this year. That's the goal by Dece- November, de- December. I haven't put a date on it yet, but I've started dropping teasers on Instagram and I'm about halfway done yes. with the book. So there's a lot of fun stuff to like come with them, but I've really like enjoyed writing their story because it's been really fun to like graduate from Audrey and Donovan into a new couple. And mm-hmm. T and Logan are just a good ass time because they are both... So she's like a black cat. He's golden retriever. So like their dynamic, she, Tia's such a badass. She's like a black belt in jujitsu and she's just fucking cool. Damn. Um, and she's also half Asian. So that was like another surprise that I decided to have for people. So having just like yeah. a little person of color, which was fun for me. Um, mm-hmm. But Logan rides a motorcycle and he's just like very, he'll fuck anything under the sun. And um I'm just excited to see him get tamed by her, which is going to be really fun to. Oh, cool. You, yeah. you write your sex scenes are just unbelievable. Thank you. So I'm like so excited hearing you say that it's yeah. like even spicier because we're going to have a good time reading it. Yeah. yeah. It's spicier in the sense of what they're doing, but it's still yeah. going to mm-hmm. be very, I feel like Donovan Audrey was still really explicit as far as their scenes. Oh, yeah. But they had like they made love you know yeah and t and logan yeah. like they fuck <laughs> you know they gonna yeah. Fuck. yeah like they'll they'll make oh love too but they're fucking like yeah uh, Aud- amazing audrey and donovan were just like looking each other in the eyes and she's like i love you i love you i love you and donovan and t and logan are just like that's not happening right now just yeah <laughs> give me that bung hole. yeah <laughs> give me that pucker <laughs> give me that puckered hole <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, again so we can't wait for that to come out we will have to talk again oh, yeah. when that comes out yes. because we love you thank and we you. love talking to you well thank you like for reading my book anyway and like signing yeah, up for an arc like I know you've never done that before I don't know what made you want to but I I think it was we hadn't even started not really um, me, um like our voice texting at that point, but we just would DM a few times and yeah. I saw you had an arc and I was like, I don't know. I just like, like her. I'm going to sign up for this arc yeah. and voila, thank God I did because hello, our relationship. I know. Um, and I've never signed up for an arc since and I have no interest because <laughs> it, it's like it's a lot. It's, it's just a lot. And we have so many books to read yes. and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't need this pressure, but like, um, it was cosmic obviously was. because that's how we, we're able to really even get to start talking more. So yeah. we love you. Thank you. I love Thank you, you guys for talking. so much. Thank you for having me. Please keep me. sending keep sending us voice memos of your thoughts <laughs> of the oh, books yeah. that we're reading. Well, so when you read Unhinged, I want a voice memo. I'm doing we that do. today. So after this, okay, I'm okay. going to read. And also, have you guys heard of Stuffed? Yes. Yes. That keeps coming up on okay. my Okay. So I think okay. I was going to just mention it to y'all because it came up on mine. I was like, I need Kayla and Amanda to cover this because... Okay. I downloaded it just to like 
be because I'm on the unhinged and then I was like well I should probably read about a sentient pillow so <laughs> why, why not? not you should fucking why not Let's, we're I gonna know. we'll do it we'll do a buddy read together oh my god amazing well I'm gonna do unhinged and I'm I okay, will be it. giving you my thoughts in voice notes okay thank you but I just oh, love, we you, love guys. you thank y'all so love much you. thank you for reading thank you for coming on thank you for having me and I'm so yes. excited to listen to this episode Yes. Oh my god. We'll keep you we'll keep you posted on on timing and sure. all the things. Okay. Well, thanks you guys. Okay. Have a Bye. good one. Have a great one. Bye.